Good morning, folks. Many of you remember the Grail Moon mission sent to map the gravity along the lunar surface. In late 2013, the mission ended and the device was sent crashing down to the moon. The images of the lunar gravitation have been stunning since day one, and the latest, most processed and detailed images to come from the mission is the cover of the latest geophysical research letters. I'll never get tired of those. Coming to the RSOE EDIS alert map from some disaster updates. Deadly landslides have struck both Indonesia and Brazil in the last two days. The ones in Brazil were occurring relatively close to some World Cup games. To the south of that, the convergence lines we showed off the South Atlantic the past week or so indeed caused a major flood disaster that has claimed lives and a lot of homes. I want to review the highs and lows and their drive on the surface winds of Earth. In the northern hemisphere, Lows want to spin counterclockwise and suck inward at the ground level. High pressure spins clockwise and pushes out from the center of the system. This is not a temperature map. It's a temperature change map or temperature delta. That counterclockwise drive for the lows forces cooler northern air down the western edge while heat and moisture rip up the eastern edge of the counterclockwise flow. This is why we're seeing unseasonable heat, followed by storms, and then unseasonable cold right afterwards as the climate continues shifting, the pressure differentials increase, and that swing back and forth becomes wider with stronger storms in the middle. The Rockies can make the connections difficult to see, but west of that in the Pacific, just south of the Aleutian Islands, the flat sea surface allows the form of the pressure cells to be truly revealed, along with the importance of their connection to one another. Kind of looks like sunspots. In the southern hemisphere, the lows still suck in and the highs still push out, but their spin is reversed. Clockwise lows, counterclockwise highs, but it is still heat on the east side and cold on the west side of the lows. That doesn't change either. So what's the story tonight? Most of the planet has a lighter weather night ahead, but the U.S. is in for more gruesome weather tonight. We have a secondary low as well out on the east coast that is jointly yanking heat and moisture north up through the central states and fountaining out in a spreading motion as it hits the cooler air force southward from the Canadian high pressure cell. Tonight's watch zone is freaking enormous. More than a third of the landmass of the lower 48 will need to take significant precautions this evening as the heat and moisture meeting cooler, drier air is commanded by the laws of chemistry and physics to equalize their characteristics, find a good middle ground quickly. When that happens, there are energy exchanges and upwellings and twisting air pockets, and most importantly, very severe weather. It has been going on for a few days now, and it's not done. In addition to tornadoes, hail, and major wind, the flood scales are skyrocketing. We've had records set in nine different locations in the past 72 hours. Eyes open tonight. We're on to our star where the flaring hit the floor again along with the Uyen candidates. We'll be examining the two southern sunspot groups today. Our former X-Flare maker departing to the right has the red negative umbra at the tail again, but no mixing here or in her little shadow to the left. The incoming sunspots have some fairly good beta complexity, but they're just too spread out for major mixing or major flaring. The real story last night was the coronal hole stream impact. In the evening news, we wondered if this would be a non-event. Just a few hours later, the density spikes dropped off and on came the speed. The shifts in the solar wind current sheet are likely what caused the enhanced cosmic ray flux during the event. As it is, even this was a weak coronal hole event. We've got only the more sensitive meters affected by the space weather. The coronal holes on the disk now, north and south, and a little one centrally. Moderate power, north and south, but not much in the middle. Could be due to the fact that the coronal fields want to block that outward flow from the lowest latitudes. The coronal holes are those dark portions you see here in 211 angstroms, matching those previous charts. I'll leave you with two incoming plasma filaments and some shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.